Although many species of snakes are venomous and some can be lethal, there are also lots that don't have any venom at all and are practically harmless to humans. One of the best snakes for captivity, and one of the easiest to keep, is this little guy here. This is a corn snake. He comes from the United States of America. This species of snake is incredibly docile and placid. He loves to just be handled and glides between your hands. And people that haven't held snakes before often say that they're slimy or, or disgusting to hold, but nothing could be further from the truth. Those beautiful scales are silky smooth and soft, and the feeling of him gliding between your hands is a lovely sensation. This species of snake can get up to two meters in length and can live for up to 18 years, so it's quite a long-lived reptile. You might notice his little tongue flicking in and out as he explores and moves forward. This isn't in any way a sign of aggression. Snakes have a special organ in their mouth, and by flicking out their tongue, they can sample the air. And like smelling, they can detect chemicals in the air. And if you keep your conditions just right, corn snakes are quite easy to breed. And you'll end up with several of these little babies. Aren't they cute? These guys are a few weeks old. And each individual in the clutch is a different color. This is a dark one. Look, here's a slightly red one. They're absolutely beautiful. Corn snakes aren't that active, and so they're perfectly at home in a relatively small tank. You should try and make sure that the snake has about a square meter of floor space. That's generally enough to allow them to scurry around and explore a habitat to some extent. The tank should be about a third of the length of the snake high. That gives the snake a bit of vertical height to explore and climb around. For substrates, many different substrates will do. The best, though, is wood chippings or wood shavings. So you can get those dry shavings put in about three centimeters deep throughout the tank, and that'll give the snake some, some habitat to burrow and, and snake around in amongst those shavings. Some people do use wet newspaper, but the ink can be harmful. Other people use orchid bark chippings, but this can raise the humidity and might cause respiratory problems. Like all snakes, corn snakes are cold-blooded, so if you live in a temperate area, you will need to heat the snake's tank, and especially during winter. You can do so using a heat lamp, like this one in here, and this radiates a, a big patch of warmth in a section of the tank. Or you can buy heat pads like this one. They're available in a range of sizes. Just make sure you get one that doesn't cover the full length of the tank. It's important that the snake has an area of the tank that isn't heated, so that if he gets too hot, he can retreat to that area to cool down. Make sure you put in some sticks or logs or something like that, or branches, so the snake can climb and has a bit of three-dimensionality to its habitat. And it's always a good idea to put in pieces of cork bark like this one. This will give the snake a place to hide away under and escape from the bright lights if needs to. You need to put in a little water dish like this so your snake can drink. Always make sure it's topped up with fresh water and change it regularly so it's always nice and fresh for your snake. Corn snakes like mice. You can buy frozen dead mice from your local pet or reptile shop. They come in a range of sizes from little baby mice that are often called pinkies, right the way through to large adult mice. Choose the size of mouse that is about roughly one and a half times the length of the snake's head. That's about the right size for the snake to be able to eat it easily. Some snakes will actually search out the mouse and find it, so all you need to do is put it in the tank. Others need a bit of stimulation. For those, you can get tongs and just delicately wiggle the mouse in front of the snake's head and he'll bite and eat it. Never ever feed live mice to your snake. It's cruel and unnecessary, and rodents can actually cause serious injury to the snakes. In some cases, it can even be fatal. Once you've fed your snake, you should leave it alone for about 24 hours. If you handle the snake immediately after it's fed, they can sometimes regurgitate their prey.
Corn snakes shed their skin several times a year. You'll know when this is about to happen because their eyes will go milky. At that time, the snakes can be a little bit more temperamental and they often don't feed, so it's best to leave them alone when you see those eyes mist over. You can keep multiple snakes together, but it's best not to. There have been instances of corn snakes cannibalizing each other, especially if you've got one large snake and one small one together. And of course, it can also transfer disease. For more information, please visit the Weird and Wonderful Pets website, where you can download information PDFs and secure your copy of the accompanying book.